Hey guys, it's Kath, and today I'm doing a Photoshop tutorial. I made this specifically for my friend Haley, but I figured I would share it with everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to mask out an object using the pen tool and create a new background for your image. This is just something I learned in school that's really helpful for product photography, as you can make it look like you have a perfect, clean, seamless background even when you don't. I'm by no means a Photoshop expert, but hopefully you can learn something helpful from this video. So this is the image that we're starting out with, and yes, you can expect a video actually using this palette sometime soon. As you can see, the background is not perfect, the white doesn't take up the whole frame, and the actual surface is textured and a little bit dirty, so we're going to fix all of that. I'm starting out by duplicating the background layer twice, I'm naming the bottom layer shadow and the top layer palette and then I am making a curves layer we're not actually keeping this so you don't really have to worry about how it looks I'm just doing this because I need to be able to see the distinction between the shadow and the palette a little bit better they're both very dark so it's a little hard to see without bringing up the brightness on those a little bit so now I'm going to paths clicking new path and clicking the letter P on my keyboard to bring up the pen tool and I'm just zooming in to see a little better clicking to create my first point and then I am going all the way down to where I want my second point to be so if you're just making a straight line you can just click and it will be a straight path but if you are wanting a curved path, you will click and drag and you'll see these little arms come up and you can command click on the point or on the arms to adjust the curve and adjust the path direction, size of the path, all of that. So that's kind of the rundown of the pen tool. So I'm just going to speed through making the path that outlines the palette, otherwise it would just be like 10 minutes of you watching me click and drag around the outside of the palette, which would be really boring. Using the pen tool does take some getting used to, especially with like command clicking and dragging those little arms to make the tiny curves. It is like a little finicky and definitely takes some practice. If you make a point that you didn't mean to, you can just click on it and it will delete the point and then you can go right back to clicking to continue along the path. Be mindful when you're making your path. A lot of times things will look like they're a straight line but actually have a very slight curve to them. So that's where the little arms come in handy. You can make very, very, very slight curves to outline the path properly. This is definitely the most time-consuming part of the whole separating the object from the background process, and obviously the more complex your object is in shape, the more time-consuming this part will be. If you have multiple objects that you want to separate from the background, you can do that as well. Once you close the first path, which you do just by clicking on the first point that you made, you would just click on the next object and do the same thing. Be mindful when you have outlined all of the objects that you want to separate from the background that you name your path. To do that, you double click where it says work path and then you just type whatever name you want. If you don't do this, when you go back into layers or click on something else, your path will disappear and all that time you just spent making your perfect beautiful path has gone to waste. So here I am just adjusting the path a little more. You use the direct selection tool to do this once you have actually closed your path and it is a little finicky so you sometimes have to like click outside and then command click on the path. Takes some getting used to, like I said, practice makes perfect and I am still not perfect. So here I am naming that path, I am naming it palette because this is the palette path. The shadow path will be a separate work path. Then I'm going to the path selection tool, that little arrow under the text symbol and I am right clicking on the path and clicking make selection. So here you can enter your feather radius, I just do one pixel just to make sure the edge isn't too harsh, and now your path is loaded as a selection. You can also do this by pressing command and clicking on the path under paths. Doing this will load it with whatever feather radius you last used. 
Next, you're gonna go into the Layers tab and I'm clicking on the layer that says Palette that we made earlier. And then I am hitting Control and clicking on the Layer Mask button to load that selection as a layer mask. Now you can see that palette is isolated on its own layer. And because it is a layer mask, you can easily add and subtract from the layer using the brush tool, which I will touch on later if you don't already know how to do that. Next, I'm repeating those same steps, but for the shadow. So we're making a new path and using the pen tool to outline just the shadow. Because the shadow layer will be under the palette layer, all that will show is what peeks out from under the palette. So I just make a little triangle inside the palette to close the path to make it simpler. The shape that I outline inside the palette will not show once we load it as its own layer mask. Since shadows have soft edges, when I enter the feather radius, I'm using a large number. This time I settled on the number 20, but you can really just play around with it to see what works and what you think looks best for your photo. Then I'm clicking that shadow layer and control clicking on layer mask and now you can see we have the palette and the shadow isolated and now I can turn off that curves layer I made earlier because we no longer need it. Next, I'm making a new layer and making sure it is placed under the palette and the shadow layer and I'm naming it Gradient. I press G to bring up the Gradient tool and I click one of the simple Gradient presets that just has two colors in it. I double click on the color squares to change the color and I'm sampling a light white from the actual white background in the image. For the second color, I'm sampling a light gray from the image and I'm just tweaking it a little bit to make it lighter. You can drag the slider in the middle to adjust the gradient as well. Then I'm clicking radial next to the little gradient in the toolbar. This will make the gradient apply as a circle and I'm clicking and dragging from inside of the palette to the edge of the image to apply that gradient to the layer. From here, it's just a matter of playing around with your gradient to get the look that you want. I like a very slight vignette to the image as it imitates using a single light source in a studio and it also just adds a slight bit of depth to the background. This is all just a matter of preference, there's no wrong way to do it and keep in mind that each time that you tweak the color in your gradient, you will have to reapply it to the layer. Next, I'm applying a saturation adjustment layer to the shadow layer and desaturating it, which I don't really need to do because I end up using the gradient tool to fill in the shadow layer with a dark gray subtle gradient. I do this because the original background was so textured, I realized it was showing through on the shadow layer. If your background isn't textured, you can totally get away with just adjusting the curves, saturation, and opacity of the layer to get the look you want for your shadow shadow. Now I'm going to show you how to add and subtract from the layer masks. So I'm clicking on the layer mask for the shadow layer. Make sure you click on the mask and not the layer itself. And then I'm going to the brush tool and I'm just making it a very soft brush. To erase, have the brush toggled to black and to add back to the layer, have the brush toggled to white. I'm just using this to adjust the shadow at the bottom right corner and make it look a little more realistic. And that's all there is to it. Here is the final before and after of our original image and our image with the nice new background that we made. Obviously from here you can adjust all your layers to fit your preferences and there's probably tons of ways to do this in Photoshop. There's always like a thousand ways to do everything in Photoshop. So if you have another way that you like to do, awesome. Feel free to comment it down below to help people out as well. But I hope that this was helpful. I hope y'all enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Bye!